All right, so Boston Hitch a Ride. This is from their 1976 debut album. And it's just an awesome song. I've always really loved this song. Everything about it, you know, all the acoustic parts are great, but the solo at the end and all the guitars in it are just, just, just awesome. So good. And I've had a lot of requests for this one too, so I finally got around to doing it. And before I even get going, I do play the song. I get a lot of people saying, hey man, you know, you should really play the songs that you teach. And I always do, but a lot of times they'll be in a different video. So if you click that eye up there in the corner, that information card thing, or the link in the description box or the first pinned comment to be a link to my website. And um, really that's the best place to watch all this stuff because it's all in one place and it's really easy to find things. Okay, so there's a lot to this guitar part, so let's get right into it. On the record, they're in B flat. Okay, so they're, they're tuned up. Um, a half step, but I'm teaching it in standard tuning. So, and we're in the key of A. Um, it's really, it's more like A mixolydian because we've got an A, a G, and a D. Those are that's the um, progression. So we're going to start out like this. And that is the core of the song right there. So we're going to put a little finger on the G string on the ninth fret and first finger on the seventh fret of the D string. And we just do an arpeggio, A string, D string, G string. And then we're gonna upstroke that D string. I'm gonna drop that pattern down two frets. And then we arpeggiate it, A string, D string, G string. Hit that G string. We take our finger off the fifth fret, go down to the fourth fret. And just go down and up, ending on that D string. And to finish it off, we just arpeggiate that A chord. Now you could just go, just hit that single G string, or you could put the B string in there too to get that A chord. He kind of does both because they're double track guitars there. So that whole thing, a little bit slower. to play with your fingers behind the fretboard, but I know it's easier for you to see what's going on that way. Okay, so we do that a bunch of times and then we get into the chorus, and the chorus is gonna go like this. All right, and that is really cool. We just got a D chord with a little suspension. And now we get into this bit, which, um, those are tenths. So take that G note there on D5. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. A tenth interval, ten inter intervals away from that G note. But in actual fact, it's a third, right? but it's a third an octave higher. Tenth. And um, it's kind of... You know, it's the whole blackbird thing is all tenths, right? So we're gonna go... You'll see a lot of guys play it up here. And, you know, you could do it there, but it's kind of awkward, and you're going to get a different tone. The tonal quality is hitting that A string. You hear how much thicker that is? And also, um, it's far away. It's too far away from playing that next chord. I've seen videos of Tom Schultz play this live, and he's clearly doing it down here. 
The first interval is G5 and E7. And the next one is going to be G4 and E5. And the next one is uh, D2 and G3. And then we're going to go D, the D note on uh, B3 and the open D. And the next one is we form an A chord, but we just pluck G2 and the open A string. So we've got an octave. You obviously can tell, but I'm hybrid picking this, so I'm using my middle finger on the high string and plucking the low string with my pick. Okay, now we're going to get into this. Uh, it's like a G chord, but over an E bass. E minor 7. And to an A. Repeat it. And the strumming is going to be like... So we're going to go, it's sort of a down, and we hit that open A in between on the change. And then we're upstroke on that next E minor 7. Bum, bum, two hits there, right? So. And then E, same thing, and then A. And I play the A like that just because it's really easy to make that change. And then we do this, it's like a G over an A, and then a D, we've got that little lick there. got that Okay, and that is the first verse, the first chorus. He does another verse, and coming out of that um, second chorus, we've got that bit there. So we're gonna be on this F sharp minor, but we're gonna play it like a power chord, so. That G string is going to get muted out by my little finger, and that's super important. So all we've got is root 5, root 5, root. We've got no third in there. We don't want to, we don't get that. You know, it changes the whole vibe of it if you get that minor third in there. So mute that out with your little finger, and it's like down. Down, up, down, kind of. I mean, I can't really <laughs> get into every strumming pattern, but. And then we're gonna drop down to this. Um, it's like, it's an E power chord. Okay, so. Like, 
so. It's based around that D shape, right? But we're just using those notes. And we're going to go up, 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 up strokes, right? Bam, bam, bam. Bam, ba, da, bam. Then da, 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 to a B uh, bar chord. And we do have the third in that chord, right? And just repeats. how we ended just B bar chord bam bam ticka ticka bam bam to the E and then we've got that and that's where the woo 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 all that stuff <laughs> comes in right? and then the acoustic curl will go A, G over A, D over A, A. And then over that little um, solo, you can just do the verse again, right? And then it'll go back into the chorus. And then, you know, that repeats, but then we get into the ending part, which is this. of variations on that three actually so the first one is D string G string B string back to the D string and then like I'm not gonna call every uh, string in every pick but I will play it really slow and then we're gonna make this formation And that's the hardest part of this um, acoustic guitar part. So it's like kind of a D7 shape, but with your finger down one more fret. And then... So that's your first cycle. Okay, now your next cycle is going to be almost exactly the same, except it gets a bit easier. That's your opening lick. And then open G there, right? And that that looks exactly the same. And then and that does that twice. G. And then a slight variation. That part's the same. So that's right, we're starting on the high E string. And open G again. Twice. 
mais. Okay, and then we start strumming, and the strumming is this. minor over D. just goes on forever all through the solo right until we get to the ending and the ending goes like this the last cycle would be Just uh, B1 and G3. And then G over D. And that is it. Okay, so let's just go over that ending bit. it. That ending section is pretty intricate and at some point <laughs> I'm hoping to be able to um, have a tab of that. I don't know if I'm going to be able to um, swing that just because of all the licensing stuff um, but maybe one day I will. I don't know. But for now, you know, playing it slow you can write out your own tab I think fairly easily from that. Um, so that's it for this one. I'm going to have the electric lesson up next week and that is just killer. Those solos and the harmonies, just beautiful, awesome playing. Um, but, you know, the bed tracks are really important, I think. And you know, the only way to get the leads to sound good is to have the bed tracks and get them right. Because it all works together, you know, to give you that overall sound. Anyways, that's it for this one. Like I always say, I hope you get something out of it. I hope to see you in the electric lesson next week. Thanks for watching. And we'll talk to you next time.